Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to today's bite-sized session, I'm going to say, on improving your work-life balance. So it's been a while since I did one of these. Facebook has changed their tech setup. I've cut my hair. I have a tan. All change and, uh, and all good. So good to see you. Um, love these sessions. Short, sweet, free sessions for you, hopefully to bring some different insights to you and, um, and give you some actionable steps to take. I'm already seeing that the Instagram share isn't working, so I'll see what I can do if I can fix that. And if not, apologies if you did try to watch on Instagram and I will of course share the video after that. So I think it's going to be tricky to edit that while I'm here. So apologies to Instagram people. So let's go here in Facebook in the meantime. So hopefully you know me, certainly if you're in the Facebook community, if you found me on Instagram, my name is Anna Lindberg. I help you reimagine success beyond the traditional nine to five. And one of the core concepts here is what I call, rather than work-life balance, work-life integration. Because it's never going to be completely harmonious, it's never going to be perfectly seamless, and yet the idea of work and life being juxtaposed, being this zero sum game, more of one means less of the other. It's this fight all the time. It's not helpful, it's not true. And so thinking about you as an individual being a whole person and also your life being a whole life, work is a part of it, an important part, but still just one part of life. And so we need to consider it as such. Um, and, and really look at our goals, look at what we're trying to achieve, look at being present wherever we are. That's one of my big goals at the moment and enjoying time with our family, with our loved ones, wherever we live, travel, hobbies, reading, learning, while also making a difference with our work. So that's, you know, that's not too much to ask for, is it? <laughs> Quite a high bar to set. But I wanted to walk you through three, three, there you go, three different um, things to look at really. But I suppose before getting into that, one question to ask yourself and do comment as well if you're watching live or if you're watching the recording later on is why are you here? Why are you attracted to this headline of improving your work-life balance? What is out of balance right now? So just taking a moment to reflect on, oof, something doesn't just feel, doesn't feel quite right perhaps, or I'm not making progress on this goal that I'd wanted to move forwards on, or I feel like I'm torn in, in two or being pulled in all these different directions, or uh, you know, I'm I'm not earning enough with the business, but also not being present with the kids. That's a really tricky situation, right? If we feel like we're sort of oh not really doing a great job um, in either place. So what does poor work-life balance look like for you? And it could be stress, getting close to burnout, not making time, not having time, finding time for the things that we really want to do. And perhaps people in your life are kind of complaining that you're not very present. There may, may be actual health issues and so on. So really understanding what does poor work-life balance look like. And then I want you to look at these three things. So first of all, uh, and it's a big one, but uh, it'll be no surprise to you if you've worked with me before. The first one to look at is your vision and your goals. So the question for me here is, and apologies as ever for my handwriting, what do you want? Because if we don't know that, then you're going to struggle to find the right strategies that will get you there. Um, you can't possibly, you know, adjust what you're doing if you don't know what you want to do instead. So yes, knowing that we're not in a good place right now is already the first step, but the second step then is to know where we're trying to get to. And so in terms of your vision and goals, that means first of all, because that's what we're talking about here, your business. So it could be, what is your main thing you're trying to achieve right now? If I am trying to uh, write and launch a book, publish a book this year, that's a really important goal and that can really help me to filter the activities I'm doing, focus my attention on the one thing that's going to make the biggest difference to my business. I'm going to celebrate at the end of the year, I'm going to feel really satisfied, fulfilled and 
I've decided to write that book because it's going to play a really important part of my brand ecosystem. It's going to feed into my program, give me credibility, serve as a business card. And so having that clarity on my big goal for this year will filter into your strategy and your day-to-day activities. Likewise, if your priority right now is I need to earn money with my business, then you can focus on the more commercial activities of contacting, following up with people, um, being visible, having those sales conversations and so on, right? Being more commercial about it. So being super clear on your business goal and priority, of course, there are lots of things we need to do, but your sort of main priority will really help you. Secondly, because work is a part of life, your business is a part of life, and life is, let's be honest, the big headline, that's the main thing that we care about. You also need to be clear on your vision for your life. What do you want that to look like? And then you know, for the specific goals, when we're talking about work-life balance or integration, whatever, what does that look like for you? So we know what poor work-life balance looks like. What does good balance look like? You know, for some, it means running ultra marathons and we've got a sauna here and the beach that some of the dads go to once a week. Pretty nice. Um, It might be traveling. It might be only working three days a week. It could be picking the kids up every day from school. Um, It could be being able to play tennis on a Tuesday morning, going to bed early, um, having date night with your partner, whatever, right? So you need to know what balance looks like for you. And only then can we start to move in that direction. Even if it feels really far away from where you are today, knowing that your priority is, oh, I really want to do more exercise versus where you are today, or spend more time with my partner, or with my aging mother, um, whatever that priority looks like for you within the concept of work-life balance as well. Does that make sense? So really getting clear on what you want, big picture vision for your life, for your business, um, and specifically, what does good work-life balance look like? It's really frustrating when we're trying to get somewhere, but we don't know where that there is. So I'm always going to feel like It's a bit like having a to-do list um, that, of course, you're only ever adding to. You'll never get through it. So every day, you're just chasing this goal that you'll never get to. Um, Oh, I need to do more, more, more. Same with work-life balance. Will you ever arrive at a point where you say, oh, yeah, I've got really good work-life balance now? Maybe, but it's not so much the destination. It's the little shifts you're making along the way. So that's the first thing. The second thing specifically as a solopreneur, as a business owner, is looking at your business model and your strategies. And this is also a big topic, um, but there are a lot of different elements here at play, right? If your business model is not set up to give you the work-life balance that you want, if it requires you to work evenings or weekends, or I was just talking to a colleague who works in the wedding industry, you know, her clients are super busy over the summer, which perhaps is difficult to reconcile with having young kids who are off during the summer and so on. If your business model fundamentally is at odds with your desired lifestyle, that's just never going to work. However clear your vision, however much you take the actions you need to take, there's just a bit of a disconnect. So you want to look at, again, a couple of things. So uh, clients, very simplistically, if you work with clients who expect you to, and it could be corporate clients, particular types of corporate clients, not all of them, um, who expect you to answer emails right away, be available on Friday afternoons for meetings, reply on Sundays, work through the summer and so on, that might not work so well with your life situation. Um, On the other hand, if you have clients who really respect your boundaries, who are like you, prioritizing family and health and so on, that will really help you feel better about your decisions and help you run still a thriving business, but with clients who share those values. So that's really important. And thinking about the pricing, So if you are, you know, like me, you don't have a huge audience of thousands and thousands of people, if your pricing is super low, you're just never going to be able to do enough work to hit the income goals you want. And we haven't talked about that yet. But of course, one of the biggest challenges, I think, to having good work-life balance as a business owner is that you're not getting that guaranteed salary every month, right? Um, There's always more you can do. Um, Yes, that's true in a job too, but if you don't do it, you know, you're still going to get paid here. Every little thing you do could be the thing that unlocks success in your business. You could get a bit more money here, the client that you don't know exactly what it is you're doing that's going to bring the next thing, and so you want to do more, more, more. That's one problem, the money problem. The other big barrier, I think, to work-life balance as a solopreneur 
as an independent expert is that we love what we do. <laughs> and so, you know, it's exciting, especially at the beginning. I've lost a bit of my mojo over time. Um, but it's, you know, I've, I have new ideas and I want to launch this and oh, I can't wait to go live with that and, and rejigging the copy here and meeting that person. It's so exciting. We love it. We're passionate about it. We want to make a difference. And there it's also difficult then to turn off. Of course, the third challenge I'd say is, is the same for all of us now when we're working from home, having the lack of boundaries, everything kind of merges into one and that can be really tricky. But pricing, really important. If you're not pricing it in a way that works for your income goals, then you know, you're just, again, not going to hit that, um, that target. And the final thing is your services themselves, what you're selling. Um, because again, if I'm selling um, in-person workshops that require me to get up at three to take the train into London, um, stay away all day, all week in a hotel in Berlin and come back, you know, that could be what you want to do. But perhaps for me, that's going to mean then being away from my young kids. I've got a three-year-old and a now five-year-old. And um, from your partner, it means perhaps you can't then, um, you know, take care of your health and get the sleep you need and so on. And that's not going to work. Um, if you're uh, if you hate being behind a computer and it gives you migraines and stress and so on, then maybe having services that are all virtual and delivered online, maybe that doesn't work for you. So thinking about the structure of, you know, do you feel energized by and does it work more flexibly for you to have um, regular meetings over a long period of time or really intensive work for a short period and then you can take some time off online or in person? Uh, many people, few people, you know, is it one to one, which is more flexible, you can move calls around and things, or is it I want to have group calls at the same time every week, every month, and so on, right? So really thinking about the services that you have. Um, so in your business, are your services set up in a way that allows you to only have those three days a week that you want to work or only work six hours a day or four hours a day or whatever it is? So your vision, your goals, your business model. And then finally, it's really the day to day. And I'm um, my big philosophy, I suppose, is that you have to or not even philosophy, but uh, belief <laughs> is that you have to connect your big vision to the day to day activities you take. The example I always give is, again, wanting to be a writer. If I want to be a writer, I need to write. <laughs> so my day to day activities are inextricably linked to my goal. My goal needs to cascade down to my day-to-day -day activities. My day-to-day -day activities need to feed up into the bigger vision. Um, and so if you're not taking those steps, you're not going to see results. So the first one again, and I'm a huge fan of time blocking or time boxing, is to look at your week and plan time for those things. And that includes, of course, your personal life as well as your professional life. So Boxing time for working on your book. Uh, blocking time when you're going to have a lunch or go for a walk or play tennis in the morning or play racquetball with your partner and whatever that is. Um, that is needs to be on your calendar. Um, you decide how rigid or how flexible it is, but it almost needs to be as sacred when you've got a meeting with yourself, as it were, as if you had a meeting with a client. If I have a client meeting, a call, and if you're a client as well, we show up to that call, it's in the diary, it's a commitment. Why on earth do we not have that same commitment to ourselves? So having blocks for the important things in our calendar, really, really important. Boundaries, I mentioned that a little bit. Um, you know, I used to work so flexibly on the digital nomad kind of lifestyle. I loved sitting on my laptop in a cafe and so on. I still enjoy that from time to time in kitchens and wherever. Um, but it's so nice for me now to have this study. I have the door that I shut, turn off the computer, really clear delineation between work and stopping work, right? And I really try, you know, I have a separate WhatsApp business app versus my personal WhatsApp so I can keep client messaging separate and perhaps not reply to clients at the weekends and evenings while still being in touch with my family. I've turned off notifications on most of the social media apps and I've moved them to another page. I know you can delete them as well, but that seems a bit silly in my business. I need to be able to access Instagram and LinkedIn. Um, you can communicate your boundaries to your clients. Hey, I don't work on Wednesdays because I've got my son at home on Wednesdays or I don't do Friday afternoon. Um, I'll reply within 24 hours. You don't have to reply to emails instantaneously. So set those expectations 
identify, clarify those boundaries and enforce them, communicate them. You're going to need to keep repeating it, but I really do find all clients that you want to work with anyway, individuals B2C and companies B2B will respect the boundary, especially if you are willing to bend it if there's a crisis or a disaster, right? That's one thing, but ongoing, you don't want to be making exceptions and working late into the night and weekends and so on. Um, so blocks, boundaries, and then the final piece is then balance. And that comes full circle round to what balance looks like for you. At the most fundamental, simple level, you will have a sense of, oh, it, it's not right at the moment. Either, and this has happened to me, believe it or not, I've got too much balance, i.e. too much, um, I'm a bit complacent and I'm taking too much time off work, whatever too much is. I have a very understanding boss. I work for myself, so it's pretty good. Um, so, you know, if I'm finding that, oh, hang on a second, I've been on holiday, it's soon going to be summer, and um, I haven't really been putting my putting the pedal to the metal is that what they say an interesting metaphor um, and that means maybe oh the balance is a bit out of sync in that direction more often than not it's oh I've been working I was just talking to someone you know seven in the morning till eight in the evening and I'm doing all these lives and emails and I'm creating this lead magnet I'm doing and then you're just doing too much over there and of course it's not that black and white um, but you will have a sense or in your stomach <laughs> getting migraines in my case, um, health issues, sleeping badly, just feeling a little edge that you're not in the right place and you're not doing the right things, you're not earning what you want to be earning, you're not enjoying it anymore, you know, all these are, are warning signs, red flags. When you're striving for balance then, um, look at your calendar, look at your day-to-day -day and see, you can colour code it, um, that there is a balance between um, work and personal life, uh, being by yourself, being with other people, outside, inside, fun, serious, exercise, relaxation, you know, all these things. And um, there's no magic formula I can give you of X percent, although that would be, would that be good? I don't know, it could be useful. Um, but certainly you'll see if you color coded, let's say, um, all just work and meetings and so on, you can see that that's, whoa, hang on, there's a lot of uh, what would that be? In my case, it's blue, actually, funnily enough, on my calendar work. Um, or if it's all yellow, because that's the colour you use for family stuff. Oh, hang on a second, it's a little out of sync there as well. Um, so those are the three things I want to take you through. So um, if you're feeling that, oh, it's out of sync, out of balance, um, the first thing to do is paint a picture of what you would like it to look like from a work-life balance perspective, work-life integration really understand what is your goal right now? And that's a great question to ask yourself, of course, every year, every quarter, every month, every week, right now, sitting down, I'm feeling a bit stressed. What's my goal right now? Okay, I need to reply to those clients. I need to create this thing. Um, I need to work on that book, whatever it is. Or, oh, actually, my priority right now is to slow things down a bit, rest, take care of my health, and then come back, you know, in a few days. In fact, I, one of the girls I saw at uh, tennis this morning um, said that, oh, I've just had to tell my boss, so she works in a company, um, that I need a few days off. It's just, it's been too much. She has uh, agents kind of chasing her down all the time on the phone, and it's just been very, um, yeah, anxiety ridden for her so she was allowed to take um several days off this week and that's what she needed and she'll be back next week and she'll be great right so we need to have this um, self-awareness what do we want number one number two is our business model are the strategies and uh plans that we have in place set up to deliver what we want from an income perspective therefore also the lifestyle perspective the clients we're working with the prices we're charging and ultimately the things that we're doing, how are we marketing, how are we selling, how are we delivering, in person, online, um, many people, regular, irregular, etc. And then finally the day-to-day, -day. again, it's all very well to have a beautiful, and I have a lovely um, whiteboard over here and a <laughs> pin board over there, and I do a vision board there, you know, really nice ideas to have, lofty goals, but in order to achieve them, they need to be in your calendar. So just sitting down, looking at your calendar, making sure that you are then making time for, you know, your partner, your kids, your aunt and uncle, your dog, your um, newfound hobby of crochet, whatever it is, um, and having that balance, which again, you get to define.
So I hope that was useful. Again, one of these short uh, sessions for you. I'd love to hear any comments, reflections, or questions. Apologies that the streaming didn't work to Instagram, ironically, because I thought Facebook would be the problem today, but I'll make sure you get the link if you missed the session. I will also be doing a six-week sprint for improving your work-life balance. If that's something you're interested in, let me know. It's going to be, of course really um, bite-sized, manageable, fun, very different to anything you've done before, um, affordable, but uh, really something practical to help you to shift things. So let me know if that's of interest. You can message me or you can just comment balance and I'll send you the details of that. We'll start very soon because after that I'm off on school holidays with the kids. So need to get those six weeks in right now. Um, let me know and I'd love to work with you over the next few weeks on that. And yeah, other than that, have a lovely week. Best of luck with taking that moment to take a step back. There are little shifts, little tweaks you can make already now to improve your work-life balance. So really looking forward to hearing your insights and the shifts that you're making to inch towards that vision of how you want your work and life to look. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.